Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about topics under the standard 2.1b in, st in third grade and we're going to be talking about topics under the study island lesson compare and order whole numbers. So we're basically going to have to line up these numbers vertically place value per place value just like you do when you add and subtract and then we can use that method to compare them so as i'm going over how to do that please make sure that you are taking good notes if i ever go too fast just pause and rewind so you can get caught back up and you can even pause at the beginning of a question work the problem out yourself and then watch the video and see if you're doing really well or you see which areas you still need some work. So that's a good way to check yourself. So I'm so glad that you are joining us today and let's go ahead and take some notes. So when we are comparing numbers, there's gonna be three symbols that we use. And that's gonna be either the less than symbol, the greater than symbol, or an equal sign. So equal sign means that they are all the same, so that they, the numbers are the same on both sides. A greater than symbol, this middle one here, means that you have a bigger number, see the opening's bigger on the left side, and a smaller number on the right side, because you have the points. And you can also think of it as the greater than symbol eats the bigger number. And then the less than symbol, this top one here, it means that the smaller number is on the left, because it's a smaller on side of the symbol and then the bigger side of the symbol has the bigger number on the right and you can also think of it as this one eats the bigger number also and you can also think of it as the if you have an L and you scrunch up that L just a little bit that's going to create a less than symbol and so if you take that L from less than and smush it up that'll give you your less than symbol too. So that's just a couple of tricks to keep these three symbols that we need to use in this lesson straight. So when we are comparing whole numbers there's three steps we need to follow and the first one is to compare them by lining up the numbers being compared and so you're going to line them up place value by place value, just like you do when you're adding or subtracting, and then you're gonna compare each place value to each other, starting from the left and working to the right. The first two that you find that are different, it's the larger number a digit that's gonna be the larger number. So if I'm looking at this example, they're the same in the thousands column, but when I get to the hundreds column, they're different. So that means that here, 9 is bigger than 8, so that means 2,935 is going to be my bigger number because that 9 is bigger than 8. So here I am comparing 3,794 to 3,494. So I line those numbers up digit above digit, making sure that starting at the ones that they are lined up. And I'm just going to look at each place value column until I find one that's different. So here I both have threes, but the seven and four are different. So here seven is bigger than four, so that means 3,794 is going to be the bigger one. So if I draw my symbol eating the bigger number, I end up drawing a greater than symbol, which is B. So that says that this num first number is greater than the second number because it's the bigger number. Now I'm comparing 9,676 to 9,676. So when I said those and when I look at them, I kind of see, oh, those are the same number. And when I follow my steps to compare numbers and I line them up column by column and look for a difference, I don't find a difference. I have nine, sixes, sevens, and sixes. They're exactly the same number, so that means that they are going to be equal to each other, which is choice C. So now I'm comparing the number 4,361, so I'm going to write that down. And then underneath of it, I'm going to write down lining up the place value column 7,361. And I'm going to compare place value to place value starting on the left. And right away I find a column that's different, the 4 and the 7. 
So the 7 is the bigger number, so that means this whole number, 7,361, is going to be the bigger number. And so if I draw my symbol eating the bigger number, I end up drawing a less than symbol, because remember the L and the less than symbol look alike. And so that means this first number, 4,361, is less than 7,361. So my final answer is going to be B. So now, instead of getting the answers in words, I'm just going to give the answer as the symbol. So this is when you have to be able to match the symbol correctly. So I am going to just continue what I've been doing in all the other problems, is rewriting the two numbers I'm given to compare and writing them underneath each other, lining them up place value for place value, just like you do when you add or subtract numbers. And then I'm going to look for numbers that are different in the column. So here I have two fours, here I have two threes, and then in my next column I have an eight and a seven. So those are going to be different. The eight is the bigger number, so that means 4,382 is going to be the bigger number. So if I draw my symbol in, eating the bigger number, that means that first number is bigger, which it is, and it's greater than the second number, which is going to make letter B my final answer. So here I'm comparing 41 and 46. In this one, the numbers are small enough. You might be able to do that comparison without having to line them up, but you can always use it to check yourself also. So I'm looking at the columns, I have the same ones, 4 and 4, and then looking at this last column, I have different numbers, and this 6 is the bigger number, so that means 46 is going to be the bigger number. And if I draw my symbol eating the bigger number, then 41 is less than 46, the bigger number, and so that means the less than symbol, choice A, is going to be my final answer. Here I'm comparing 41 and 41, and so right away I can see they're the exact same number, a 4 and a 1 and a 4 and a 1. So since they're the exact same number, I'm just going to say that they're equal to each other, which is choice B. So now they're giving us four numbers to list from least to greatest. And the trickiest part with these problems is that you need to pay attention to the directions so you can say, is it the biggest number first and then down to the little number? Or do you start with the little number and work up to the bigger number in the case in this problem? And so and many times they'll give you the answers. They'll put both of those in the answers to try to trick you. So make sure you're paying attention and reading your directions. You can even underline it to make sure you remember. So I'm just going to take the numbers from choice A and list them out vertically so that I can compare them. So I'm going to follow the same steps. So I'm going to look at each place value looking for a number that's different until I have them all listed. So to remind myself also that I'm writing them least to greatest, I'm going to write an L down to a G. And that way I can also fill them in if I end up finding the bigger number first, I can fill them in and keep them in the right order. So in the hundreds column, I have three fours and a five. So this five is bigger than these fours, so that means this top number, 501, is going to be my biggest number. So I can go ahead and cross that off, and now I'm just comparing these three numbers. So the fours are all the same, and then in the next column, I have a 5 that's different than these 7s. So since 5 is smaller than the 7s, that means this number is going to be smaller than these other two. So that means 455 is going to be my smallest number. And then I look at my 1s column, and I have a 1 and an 8. The 1 is smaller than 8, so that means 471 is going to be smaller than 478. So I can go ahead and fill that in, and I have my numbers ordered from least to smallest. So the, it goes 455, and then 471, and then 478, and then 501 which is going to be choice B as my final answer. 
this problem, it asks me to order them from greatest to least. So I'm going to want to put my biggest number first and list it down to the smallest number. So just to start off, I'm going to list all of the numbers vertically from choice A, lining up carefully all of the place values so that I can start to see who has the what is the biggest numbers and what is the smaller numbers. So right away I'm looking at the hundreds column and I see two sevens and two sixes. So that means that the sevens are going to be my bigger numbers and the sixes are going to be my smaller numbers. But I need to see which one in each pair is bigger. So in the seven hundreds I have a one and a zero in the tens column. One is bigger than zero so that means 715 is going to be bigger than 709. So since I'm listing greatest to biggest, I'll go ahead and write 715 as my bigger number. And then 709 is the next one down. So then I look at my 600 numbers. And the ones, the hundreds column is the same, but the tens column, I have a 9 and a 7. 9 is bigger than 7, and I'm listing my bigger numbers first. So since 9 is bigger, that means 694 is going to be bigger than 677. So when I list all of those numbers out, I get 715, then 709, then 694, and then 677 as the numbers being ordered from greatest to least, and that's choice B. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.